This week on Council Bluffs News, the City Council votes to approve the beautification and reconstruction of the West Broadway Corridor. We get reactions from city officials, council members, and the public. Plus, it's homecoming week at Iowa Western. IWTV student Haley Hughes gives us a look at the activities, including a parade on the 100 block. Development update. Community Development Director Don Gross gives us the latest on construction progress around the downtown area of Council Bluffs. And as we near Halloween, Josh Bellows joins us in studio to talk about the screams over at Madness Haunted House. That and more all on this week's Council Bluffs News. Welcome to this week's Council Bluffs News, I'm Aaron Zach. The West Broadway Corridor project is something Council Bluffs has been wanting for years. It'll fix the sewer system that continues to get backed up during heavy rainfall, and it'll beautify the entire west end of Council Bluffs. October 10th, the City Council voted to approve the plan, and the first phases of the five-year construction project are set to begin next spring. Change is coming. It's going to really benefit the entire city, and I'm excited about it. And West Broadway is ready for a facelift. It's one of those areas that has been kind of uh, neglected, I think, for several years. City Council approved the West Broadway Corridor project October 10th. City engineer Matt Cox expects construction to begin the spring of 2017. We will construct all year long, and then we will do that for five sequential years. So phase two will start spring of 2018, spring of 19 for phase three, et cetera. So that'll get us the whole length of the project, five phases, one project per phase. The project is an extensive overhaul. Decorative pavers, lampposts, and traffic signals are meant to help beautify the corridor while new sewers should drastically improve water drainage. So the maintenance level will go up. We'll install storm sewer the length of Broadway, which it's never had, and so that puddling along Broadway will go away. A middle median is also in store for some portions of the five-lane road. The landscaping barrier will be similar to those seen in other locations around town. I think it'll improve you know, traffic flow, and uh, I think it'll be a good deal for the city, especially since that's where most traffic will be coming into the city. And, Council Bluffs is really turning into a nice city, I think. Some concerns have been raised that the planned medians will interfere with the ability to turn towards businesses in certain locations. City officials say the planning for this project included a lot of public input. There were multiple public hearings. There's been efforts to contact the uh, property owners uh, to talk to them. They came to meetings, they gave input, we responded to the input. So I, I think that's where the compromises come in and, and there's still plenty of opportunity and time for additional compromise. For Andy Krahulik, an ex-bartender on West Broadway, he welcomes the transformation of the city's most notable entrance. I remember when it was really not a good area. You know, the old, the old days of Fat Jacks and, and this and that. And certain places down there, that, you know, but, you know, when they, when they first put up the lights down there, the tower lights, oh, they were beautiful. You know, they, it was a nice new entrance. Mayor Matt Walsh believes once this project is complete, not only will it make the West End more beautiful, but it'll bring more opportunity to the entire city. And then the aesthetic features, thanks to our partner at Iowa West Foundation, will make it much more appealing. And certainly a more appealing, more walkable environment brings customers. And so. The businesses on Broadway will benefit, as will the rest of the community. I mean, anything that we can do to make our community look better and more presented, I think is a very good idea. City officials will work with contractors over the next few months to formulate specifics for the first phase of construction. 
To learn more about West Broadway Corridor Project, including the render drawings and a tentative work schedule, you can go to the city's website, councilbluffs-ia.gov. October 15th and 16th was the third annual Pumpkin Festival at Dittmar's Orchard and Vineyard. The festival has many activities including tractor rides and a corn maze. Great food and wine were also on hand inside. Lyle Dittmar organized the festival. Our idea is to make it uh, customer friendly. It's a place where we hope that you're more relaxed when you leave than when you got here. Uh, we've got a lot of space. Uh, you know, we do sell things, but it's, it's not commercial, it's more horticultural. It's a place where people can kind of relax and get back to nature. The pumpkin patch and orchard will be open for the rest of the season. For more information about Dittmar's and upcoming events, go to www.dittmarsorchard.com. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Mike Simmons. Iowa Western hosts a number of activities for students and alumni to celebrate Homecoming 2016. Prior to the big game on Saturday afternoon, Reaver Fever hits the 100 block for the third annual Homecoming Parade. IWTV student Haley Hughes has more. For some, it's a simple way to show support. I like seeing my students. And for others, it's a way to show off their school pride. Just having a good time doing it, showing off for our fans. October 13th, Iowa Western celebrates homecoming with the parade. Um, I'm an instructor at Iowa Western. I teach math, and this is, I think, our third parade that we've come to with my kids. The event opens a weekend filled with activities surrounding homecoming 2016. We've got four kids, and they love coming to the parade. The Reaver Athletic Department is well represented. Along with members of the community, the Reaver Marching Band makes their presence felt throughout the 100 block. This year's festivities are even more special as the school celebrates its 50th year anniversary. From Council Bluffs News, I'm Haley Hughes. Do you hear that? I think I hear wedding bells. If you hear that too, then you're in the right place. The Mid-America Center hosts a wedding essentials bridal fair. That begins our coverage in News Around the Bluffs. Soon to be brides and grooms come to the Mid-America Center in Council Bluffs Sunday, October 16th. Wedding Essentials of Omaha and the Omaha World Herald host a wedding idea show. People are able to look at the area vendors to see if any of them are the right fit for their future wedding. I'm hoping all the brides and grooms that are coming to the show today get some great ideas for their wedding, upcoming wedding or upcoming engagement party or um, any kind of party that they are hosting around their wedding. Um, this is what the show is truly about. We have lots of different idea displays for them to look at and touch and feel and kind of get uh, the best idea for what they want to do and get um, something that hopefully that will be true to them for their wedding. The event also has an all-day fashion show with wedding dresses and tuxedos from area businesses. For more wedding ideas as well as vendors and area DJs, go to omaha.com slash wedding essentials. Another new business opens up on West Broadway. The franchise Raising Cane's brings its tasty chicken fingers and dipping sauce to Council Bluffs. Raising Cane's, a Louisiana-based restaurant, makes its Iowa debut. The restaurant, which specializes in chicken fingers and french fries, opens October 11th at the corner of 25th and Broadway in Council Bluffs. Approximately 12 months ago, uh, we secured the lot, secured the deal, started construction around eight months ago, digging the lot and knocking down the existing buildings. Uh, the building took about four months to get put up. And then over the last five weeks, we've hired our crew, we've trained our crew, we've got them excited about Kane's culture, uh, and then here we are on opening day. With a projected customer count of 2,000 people on opening day, the restaurant gets a warm welcome to the Hawkeye State. If you don't make it on opening day, they are open Monday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. Electronics. You never know what to do with them when you upgrade to bigger and better gadgets. Iowa Western offers some assistance. Iowa Western partners up to recycle electronics October 15th outside of Dodge Hall. Volunteers collect junk electronics in the 6th annual event from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. People can drive up and drop off their unwanted electronics that would otherwise end up in landfills. While with this event, we can properly recycle them and help save the environment from all these harmful uh, additives like lead from CRTs. 
If you missed the event and would like to recycle your electronics, head over to the Goodwill and Council Bluffs or the Council Bluffs Recycling Center. Still to come on Council Bluffs News, Development Update. We sit down with Community Development Director Don Gross to get the latest on projects around the downtown area of Council Bluffs. Plus, we'll take you on a Bluffs Artist Art Walk to see some of today's top local talent and meet this month's featured artist. But coming up next, Madness Haunted House owner Josh Bellows and a few of his frightening friends joins us in studio to get you ready for Halloween. Stay tuned. Body language. Without saying a word, it can tell you so much. Like someone is having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Schedule your campus visit today. Iowa Western, the world is waiting. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Welcome back to Council Bluffs News. I'm Aaron Zach. Joining me in studio today is Josh Bellows. He is the creator of Madness Haunted House, and he's here with me today. Josh, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about the inspiration you had in getting this started? Um, myself and some friends have been doing a home haunt for about the past three years. Um, last year we got partnered up with Care and Share House, which is a free store and food pantry here in Council Bluffs. Um, we did a pretty good uh, charity drive for those guys last year. Um, it went really, really well. We were very well received by the public. And this year we just thought we'd take it to the next level. How long does it take to create a haunted house? Well, from, from conception to design to build, we had from August 1st, I had started looking at the location where we're at um, probably around July. Um, and then August 1st, we started building and we were building up until we opened on September 23rd. Well, speaking of that new location, you are in a new location over at the Mall of the Bluffs. Mall of the Bluffs. Uh, tell me a little bit about the popularity that you got uh, to get to that place. Well, the Mall of the Bluffs um, is just a perfect location for us. We're all, um, pretty much all of us are born and raised here in Council Bluffs, and now we're raising families in Council Bluffs. So when we were scouting for buildings, we really wanted to stay in Council Bluffs. Um, we, there was never a pro haunt over here, which a pro haunt is just a, not a backyard haunted house is what that is. Um, but so the location was great. Um, and really getting in there went a lot smoother than we thought it was going to us being the first haunted house. Uh, but we started talking to some people, knocking on some doors and made it happen. All right. So let's get into the GIF of things. 
When people show up there and they go inside, what can they expect? The theme we were going with is intensity. It kind of starts as soon as you get out of your car out there. We have some music on Friday nights, which tonight we have a uh, live DJ every Friday night. Um, we have some line actors out there. So as soon as you get out of your car, you're starting to experience what you're going to get inside. It's pretty intense, and uh, a lot of people really have a good time. And how much does it cost to get into your place? General admission is $12. If you bring a donation of uh, canned foods or boxed foods or clothing any night um, that we're open, uh, it's $11. It's $1 off. And then Wednesday nights we have a BOGO special, which is buy one, get one free. Uh, so those are just little incentives to get us in the door. Is there a website you can go to to find out more information? Our website is madnesshaunt.com. Um, we do most of our posting and updating on Facebook, also at Madness Haunt. Um, that's where our schedule is, and like I said, we, we keep all the fans and everybody up to date on what's going on down there. <laughs> uh, Josh, thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Uh, I look forward to it. Yeah. I hope you sleep well tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm going to. <laughs> Council Bluffs News will be right back after this. Stay tuned. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. What do you think it would be like to teach? Chances are, you have no idea. Teachers today are breaking down obstacles, finding innovative ways to instill old lessons, proving that greatness can be found in everyday places, and that you don't need to be famous to be unforgettable. That's what it's like to teach. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. Let's catch them before it's too late. To start helping students in your community, visit boostup.org. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with Dachshund Reading. Uh, how can I help my daughter with her reading? Information on hot water heating. Uh, no. Sarah's bright, but when she's reading, she has trouble sounding out the words. World music, playing track now. No. Let me try. Our daughter gets confused about which details in a story are important. Which paper towels are most absorbent? What? Here are five product reviews. Why are you not getting me? See, I told you. Wait, I was trying to show you how Sarah feels every day. Frustrating, isn't it? Redirecting to understood.org. For the one in five kids with learning and attention issues, this is what life can feel like. Explore understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues designed to help your child thrive in school and in life. Understood.org, because understanding is everything. It's time for another development update. This time we check out the projects going on downtown Council Bluffs. From the completed TS Bank to the opening of Bucksnort, to a groundbreaking at 103 West Broadway. Community Development Director Don Gross gives us the latest in this week's development update. I'm Don Gross, Community Development Director for the City of Council Bluffs. Uh, downtown, uh, CTS Bank is, is finished. Uh, built a very nice building, good landscaping, a very good addition to uh, the city. Uh, TS, uh, the, uh, in that same block, I see that the old uh, Bar restaurant that was uh, is now the Buck Snort, so it's got a new operator. And I think uh, mid October, I think they intend to have uh, groundbreaking uh, 
4103 West Broadway, uh, which is at the corner of First and, and Broadway. Uh, so that project will be underway. Um, as far as commercially, that's pretty much it. Iowa Western hosts a 5K color run on October 15th as part of the homecoming festivities and the school's 50th anniversary. Reaver women's head basketball coach Lindsay Vandy Hoof teams up with the track and cross country teams to make this race happen. Our 5K run walk course was throughout campus, which our track and cross country staff uh, created to show off some of the new buildings, some of the um, places on campus. So, you know, we were really excited about just being able to invite community members and, and share this event with them. With four color stations throughout campus, participants of all ages are covered in color at the finish line, where water and snacks are waiting for all racers. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Amanda Turner. Bluffs Artist features a local artist each month in their Bluffs Artist Art Walk, an exhibition displaying pieces of work. This month's featured artist is Curtis Dahl. The Council Bluffs native discovered his passion at an early age while in grade school admiring a teacher's artwork. And I've always had a penchant for drawing, even when I was in kindergarten. I drew. Uh, I drew anything. Sitting in church, I drew. Not listening to sermons, I drew. Uh, I was constantly drawing. Bluff's Artist Art Walk is held the second Friday of every month. If you'd like to see Curtis's artwork, visit the Park Building on 500 Willow Avenue. Still to come on Council Bluffs News, there are plenty of furry friends looking for a good home. We'll meet them in our Pets of the Week. And a look at our events calendar to wrap up the show. At the Council Bluffs Recycling Center, we're proud of the effort our community makes to help keep Council Bluffs beautiful by participating in our curbside recycling program. Here are some tips to make sure your recyclables are accepted. If you're confused about plastics, we can help. Numbers one through five plastic food and beverage containers are acceptable. Usually the recycling triangle and the number inside are located on the bottom of containers. Items we don't take include number six and seven plastics, styrofoam, or bags of any sort, although we encourage recycling plastic bags inside local grocery stores. Please be sure to check the calendar in our annual mailer or on our website to find out what items will be picked up each week. Blue Week items for your curbside bin include paper, cardboard, and glass containers. Green Week items for your curbside bin include plastic food and beverage containers, tin and aluminum containers, and tin foil. Thank you for helping us keep Council Bluffs beautiful. At Council Bluffs Savings Bank, you still get personalized customer service. We have identity safe checking with LifeLock, identity theft protection. You get personal mortgage lending to fit your needs now and in the future. You get business banking with the latest technology because saving you time saves you money. At Council of Savings Bank, you get people who answer when you call and local employees who are actively involved in our community. Council of Savings Bank, hometown banking the way it used to be. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. I'll teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up. And do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. Hello, I'm Terry Gatch Mills and welcome into Pets of the Week. This is Spot and his phone number is 21653. He's a Jack Russell Chihuahua mix. He's four years old and he's a wonderful little dog. He's very active, great on a leash, potty trained. I'm not fond of small children or cats, but he does get along with other dogs. Again, this is Spot 21653. This tiny girl is Sweetie, and her file number is 21769. She came in in just deplorable condition. She's now growing her hair back, and she looks great. Sweetie's file number is 21769, and she's a wonderful little lap dog. She's a Yorkie mix, and she's around 18 months old. Again, this is Sweetie, file 21769. 
This is Shima and this is Shay. They're four months old and they were born right here at Midlands Humane Society. Shima's file number is 21477 and Shay's file number is 21474. They're four months old and they're great little kittens. This is Pierre and his file number is 21863. He's a little black tabby and he's 10 weeks old and he's a very friendly little kitten. He currently shares a colony with seven other little kittens and he's very friendly and gets along well with others. And if you're interested in any of the pets that you've seen on today, please come down to Midland Humane Society located at 1020 Railroad Avenue in Council Bluffs. Time now for our weekly events calendar. Keeping your money happy and healthy. Sounds intriguing, doesn't it? October 26th from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., the Council Bluffs Public Library is hosting an event for everyone to learn how to keep their finances happy. The class is designed to offer tips for success, education on danger zones, and key habits that can help make your finances healthier. To learn more about the event, contact Tiffany Pinkerton at 712-325-5629 or by email at info at heartlandfamilyservice.org. Midlands Humane Society, along with Edward Subaru, is hosting its 7th Annual Canines and Costumes event on Sunday, October 23rd. The event will be held in Bayless Park from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. There'll be lots of activities for you and your furry little friend, including a photo booth, paw painting, treat in the haystack, and even a puppy parade. For more information, call Terry Gatchmills at 712-396-2270. CanFest, a concert for hunger, returns to Whiskey Roadhouse October 26th. Top country singers like Josh Turner, Chris Jansen, Cam, and Lauren Elena will be performing. Tickets are $30 per person for general admission and VIP packages are $250. You must be 21 or older to attend the event, and doors open at 6.30. You are asked to bring a non-perishable food item the night of the show for the food bank for the Heartland. For more information about the event, you can head to thecat.com. Thank you for tuning in and watching this week's Council Bluffs News. As always, CBTV is very eager to hear your feedback. If you'd like to send us your questions or comments, email them to cbtv at iwcc.edu or you can call us at 712-325-3312 or you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. Just search CBTV17. And of course, keep it right here for the latest scores and updates for local sports in your community by tuning in to the Bluff Sports Zone with J.J. Davis. For your Council Bluffs News, I'm Aaron Zach.